Hello, today I'm going to be sharing my honest and thorough review of Beast Academy Level 2. I'll be sharing some of my tips for implementation, answering some frequently asked questions, and talking about potential pitfalls or problems. Hi, I am Rachel. I am a second generation homeschooler and I love to make nerdy homeschool videos here on 7 and All. So if you like nerdy homeschool content, click subscribe and stick around because I've got lots of videos just like this one. In this video, I am going to be talking about our experience using Beast Academy Level 2. I have an actual flip through video on this same curriculum that I will link to down below. So if you want more of a view of the inside, the type of problems that you're solving, I definitely recommend heading to that video because in this one, I will be doing more of sharing our experience and tips on implementing it. For some background, Beast Academy is comprised of four guidebooks which are very colorful. They're like a comic book style or graphic novel style for the four guidebooks. And then there are four practice problem books to go with those guidebooks. And each practice problem book has the solutions in the back. Beast Academy also offers Beast Academy online. So you can opt to do this as an online program. Um, this review is not going to cover that program at all. We did not do the online version, just the books and the practice books. Now, why did I not opt to do the online version? For me and for my homeschool, I just try to keep things on paper as much as possible during the early years. I do see a lot of benefit and a lot of value in not overly switching into tech-based homeschool, especially in these very early years. My son, who I was working through level two with, was six for most of the year that we were going through level two. And books are just a better fit for us, for our stage of life and for my approach to homeschool. So this level is recommended on their website for roughly seven through nine year olds. And the topics being covered does roughly coordinate to a second grade math scope and sequence. And I say roughly. In practice, it's going to look quite a bit different than just about any other second grade math curriculum that you have experience with. I have experience with many homeschool math curriculums and the problems that you're solving in Beast Academy do not really look the same. So when you're trying to choose a level, do keep in mind that the level of problem solving that is going to be involved in Beast Academy is going to be significantly less straightforward, cut and dry, just follow the procedure and get it done compared to basically any other math curriculum for early years that I have seen. Um, their problems can truly, truly be challenging. So definitely keep that in mind because you might look at their scope and sequence and nothing on the scope and sequence looks scary at all. Um, so we have here, we're doing place value, comparing, addition, subtraction, problem solving. The problem solving chapter might sound a little scary and it is measurement, easy, odds and evens, easy, big numbers, algorithms. They're not, nothing on here is necessarily hard, but the level of skills involved in solving the puzzling types of problems that they give in the book is definitely taking it up a notch from the typical second grade elementary math curriculum. And for our family, that is exactly what I was looking for. I was looking for an early elementary math curriculum that I could use with a child who definitely has a knack for math and is moving very quickly in math. This is not the only math resource we use, but I wanted a math resource that would challenge him, get him outside of the comfortable comfort zone and really start challenging his problem solving skills. Cause I could tell that while he was doing very well with math, he wasn't being challenged. So if you go to my flip through video, you will see many more examples of what that challenging problem solving could be. But I'm just going to give you one example here. We have evaluate triangle minus 19 plus 19 minus 19 for each value of triangle below. Now that's not actually a hard problem because the minus 19 and plus 19 cancel each other all out. So all you're doing is subtracting 19. Um, but it's also not nearly as straightforward, cut and dried as the kind of math that you would get from a Becca second grade, math with confidence second grade, um, math you see um, beta. 
it's just not as straightforward. They definitely are pushing and stretching the kids in their logic, reasoning, problem solving skills. I do think there can be a bit of a misconception of what you're getting into with Beast Academy because parents will see the fun and colorful books and they'll think, this is great. I want math to be colorful and fun and there's monsters, there's comic books. This will be fun math for my kid. And this definitely can be fun math. A lot of kids really do enjoy the program, genuinely enjoy it. But if you're just looking at fun math and you have a child who struggles with math, you might really bump up into a wall when you get to these practice problems and you're like, whoa, I was not expecting to be doing problems that legitimately challenged me in second grade. So that is something you should be prepared for and be aware of that yes, this is colorful, active, we've got the comic book factor, um, but the problems are genuinely challenging and difficult. And I do think one of the struggle points or frustrations can be if a parent just looks at the scope and sequence and they see, oh, addition, subtraction, that's perfectly easy. My kid will grab that right away. But then they get to the practice problems book and they're like, whoa, 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 slow down. This is too hard. So you do want to place your children correctly and accurately. Uh, they have the guidelines of roughly seven through nine year olds. It is roughly second grade ish, although this is going to be more challenging than a second grade math curriculum. I use this with my six year old in first grade and that might be a bit of a non-traditional option. It actually worked very well, well for our family. It actually worked very well for him but that's for him specifically. I'm not recommending that, yes, every first grader should go out and do level two Beast Academy. No, this was specifically to meet his needs as a first grader who is flying very fast in math and needs a challenge that meets him at his level. I could also see using Beast Academy level two with an older student, even in maybe fourth, fifth, or even sixth grade, if it's a student who's really struggling or who just doesn't really get the knack of problem solving skills to help bolster some of their problem solving skills. So I could see this use being used with a child who is in an older grade and, and having them still find a very real challenge in these puzzles that they're solving in the practice books. The next big question that I get all the time is, can Beast Academy stand on its own? Can this be the only math curriculum? Does it need no supplementations? And I might be the wrong person to answer this question. And if you have watched my channel for a while, you'll know why. It's because in all honesty, I'm just really not a fan of using only one resource for math and limiting our children's math education to only one resource. I tend to think a math education is just improved by bringing in a variety of resources related to math and different opportunities to interact with math in different ways. So yeah, I'm, I'm not going to say yes. <laughs> I'm not going to be the one that will say, oh yes, just use Beast Academy and do nothing else with math. And also I do think for the kind of kid that will naturally be more drawn to Beast Academy, it will be easy for them to want to do more math and to spend more time on it. Um, but specifically, one of the reasons why I wouldn't use solely Beast Academy in early years math is because it doesn't tend to cover a few of those skills that young students typically still are working on, like just getting the hang of reading clocks, um, telling time, describing that in different ways. That can take a while. That takes extra practice and they don't tend to do that. Uh, it doesn't like teach you the days of the week or the months of the year. It's not uh, they did a little bit with measurement, but they didn't do a lot of practice with like conversions, you know, feet and inches. They did do some, um, but I think a lot of kids just need more practice with different types of conversions, different types of measurements, and really memorizing all of those. How many feet are in a mile? How many centimeters are in a meter? Which seems like it would be easy, but apparently for some kids it's not always easy <laughs> to remember uh, some of these conversions. So I definitely see in the early years, a lot of kids are still kind of working on more of this general knowledge stuff that is not really a strength of Beast Academy. Beast Academy is very strong with problem solving skills. I would say that is its core strength, is really teaching problem solving skills, teaching flexible ways of thinking about problems. So that is one of the key benefits to me of bringing in different resources is you can have other resources that work on just some of that memory work, just some of that memorization that needs to be done, learning of terms, learning how to do some general knowledge math stuff. Next, is Beast Academy the best math ever and gonna be a great fit for every math student? I would absolutely say no. 
And I have worked with some students in math that I would probably never use Beast Academy for because when I see kids who really, really struggle with math, a lot of times you do need to just dial things back and just teach one way to solve a problem because they need to really just have a lot of practice to get that one way down and mastered. And you might spend weeks or months practicing that one way to solve a certain type of problem. With Beast Academy, that's really not what it's designed for. It's not designed for the type of brain that needs one way to solve a problem. And really, it is ideal to have multiple de different techniques that you can pull from and different ones that you might connect better with. Um, but they are kind of giving you in these guidebooks many different opportunities, different ways, different methods. Um, and they give you practice with different methods and hints on different strategies you might want to use with a specific problem. Um, but I've definitely worked with students that I would not touch Beast Academy with a 10-foot pole <laughs> with particular students because it would just create too much stress and overwhelm and frustration. So I do think you need to be honest about the kid in front of you, whether this kid will benefit from this type of very flexible thinking approach to math. And it's not only because, oh, this kind of thinking comes very easily to my kid. If this kind of thinking comes easily to your kid, then it's kind of like a no-brainer that yes, this is a great great resource to stretch that and grow that skill. I could also see it, see using this resource with kids who just need a little bit of an extra push to get going in that direction of thinking creatively. Um, but for some kids who just really can't and who don't see numbers that way, don't experience numbers that way, I do foresee that trying to solve these types of challenging problems could create a lot of frustration. So this isn't necessarily the first resource I would recommend for kids who deeply struggle with math or just really struggle to understand numbers conceptually and get the concepts down of working with numbers in different ways. Another thing parents should note is that Beast Academy, these books are not separated up into lessons. The workbooks, the practice books are not separated up into lessons of here's how much you do in a day. Uh, so that can be a little bit of a frustrating point for parents trying to plan out how are we going to finish this all in a year. I will just share my approach. I did zero pre-planning in how long we're going to work on one chapter, how long we're going to work on one book, zero. I did no planning with that. I started this with my son when he was actually not quite six yet. So I knew he was on the young side and I knew we would probably be working through this a bit slowly. Um, I did not have a goal to finish this specifically into one school year. I just wanted to be working on it day by day, little by little. And so what we have done is we've worked on it every day, um, but it has varied how much we do in a day. Typically we do at least a page. If it's an easier type of problem, we might do two pages. If it's a kind of puzzle he really likes solving, we might get through three pages. And I'm talking about pages in the practice books. But there have also been days when if we're short on time or if it's a much more challenging, uh, time consuming type of puzzle, we might even just do half a page. And I'll say, okay, we're gonna leave this for today and we'll go to the next half of the page the next day. Um, you are not reading from the guidebooks. You're not reading these every day. You typically read a section and then there will be several, several pages of practice problems. So it's not that you're reading um, every day, uh, but it definitely varied how much we did each day, just really dependent on the challenge level of the problem and how much time it was taking and how much time we had. Uh, and we've just been progressing right along through it. So that's my suggestion is don't stress about pre-planning how long it's gonna take you because you don't really know which problem is gonna be more difficult for your child, which one he's gonna need some extra time to wrestle with. So. I want it pre-planned, I would just roll with it. And another point to mention and something to consider, especially if you're using this with a younger or math gifted, math advanced student, is um, be aware of how much you might have to be involved because this requires a good amount of reading here in the guidebook and the practice problems, there are quite a few that are word problems and involve a good bit of reading. Um, so with using this with a child who's on the younger end of the age that you could use this with, this was not something that he was largely doing independently. As we've gone through the year, he has become more independent with it because he's a lot more confident with reading instructions now and he knows enough of the process to do some of these pages completely independently. But at the beginning, this was definitely math that we were doing side by side and I would read to him and read the instructions to him as he's working through it. Um, 
So I think if you were using it with a child on the older end of the age range, um, this is something that they could do more independently. If they did have the reading skills to read this book to themselves, if they did have the reading skills, you know, that it's something where they could gradually become more independent. But if you have a kid whose math skills outpace their reading skills, this is going to require more from you as a teacher. All right, I hope this was helpful to you if you are considering using Beast Academy in your homeschool or just wanted to learn more about our experience using the curriculum. Um, if you have any further questions, leave them down in the comments below and I will try to answer them to the best of my ability. And I'll be seeing you next time. Bye!